Welcome to Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is July the 7th, 2019. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell. And I'm going to hand the watch list right over to Miss Vegas, and she is the prize winner. Go ahead, Miss Vegas. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. And uh, let's get right to this list because it's a little bit longer than the usual. As you guys know, we love to help you prepare for the week. So um, take note of these tickers or watch them in the video and then take note of the ones that you like. Um, so we're going to talk about LRAD, TRNX, TRX, BA, ACST, AETI, AMRH, ORCL, Starbucks, and ZS. So let's start with LRAD, and you know, this uh, stock here, L-R-A-D, uh, LRAD Corporation, you know, I, I haven't traded this one in a while. Uh, I did like it because of its new 52-week closing high, and I just love the way that the stock is definitely overbought. It's, got, it's a very, very strong chart, and uh, you know, you may be wondering, like, what on earth does this company even do? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you what they do. So the LRAD Corporation, they're into the technology and technical instruments. And if you want to check out their website, it's LRADX.com. And uh, they do all kinds of things. Um, and you know what? They're, I, they're a global leader. And um, they do a lot of acoustic devices. They do... Um, uh, let me just see here for the details for one quick second because they're just do, involved in just so many things. Uh, but, you, I mean, you should check out what they do. So they are they do everything that has to do with mass media to social media um, to air raid sirens. So obviously, look, let's say you're in some danger zone in some foreign country. Obviously, they have to alert you to wake you up immediately to tell you what is going on. And also, it's a communication device. Um, so you know what? They provide that kind of technology. Um, you know, they're the type of company that gives you those kinds of alarms and, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're in the speaker industry. They alert on fire emergencies. Um, and also it's a communication device. They have very high powered speaker systems that help obviously emit, unfortunately, shrilling sounds, but also followed by instructions that are communicated through their system so you know what this company is actually um a product that you know de depending where you live uh the community would use it or the city would be subscribing to things like that uh, but really this is uh, a very interesting um platform the coast guard uses them the police the fire departments um and i guess also sometimes a rural communities where they have to broadcast what is going on so this is interesting platform um the other thing too um you know they're into homeland security uses them too the defense the wildfire all those areas so the thing that i like about it like i said it is a 52 week high and let's hear it from jim where this is going because this to me is a beautiful swing trade and probably even something to watch for a day trade tomorrow if the volume can come in i think that this will have continuation on the actual stock. I wouldn't be surprised this goes to $4 and beyond, uh, but let me hear what Jim has to say. So Jim, over to you on LRAD. Yes, I'll be using the EMAs on this uh, chart demonstration. We've got the blue one for the nine, the white one's the 34, and then the 200 EMA. So LRAD, like she said, is a great, great play right now. Put her up on the yearly chart. We're going to pull up the year have a year high breakout you notice that we had to break a resistance of 364 so I'm going to draw that little trend line in there pull back support right around 350 here and then we got another one right around 350 360 and then another one right here at, what I'm doing now is just drawing up a few support lines and when the resistance we got a break is going to be this 375 and then we got to pull back right there right around 370 so I can see where the top of that wick would be a double top area but we have had a year low at 208 and now we're sitting up here at 375 so we're going to pull up the 20-day chart now and look at it 
We followed at 9 EMA all the way up on the 20 day. She's had a real nice one week, six day run. Actually, it started to break out at the bottom here at 290. And I'm going to put that resist support level right around $3. Pullback support for a very low low will be right around 332 if it decides to knife. And then we've got another little resistance support level right here, oh, right around 342 area. So there's my trend lines all drawn up just like that. We're going right straight to the daily one minute. We're looking at the daily right now, and I'm going to add another trend line right here at 365. So low support, but we don't want to go no lower, is going to be this 364, 365 area. It can pull back to the 200 EMA, which is right down here at 358. What I want to see is the breakout resistance of 375. If we can break past that 375, we're going to go to new highs. I do want to pull up one more chart on this stock, a three-year. We are at a three-year high also. So this is how I look at it. We're going to pull it back up to the uh, no lower than 358. We want it to bounce off that 200 EMA if it decides to not respect this 9. If it respects the 9, we're going to make new highs. I like to see it not really jump up real big, but maybe slow, slow little movements of 10 cents increments. And that's going to be LRAD, and I wish you the very best. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one we've had on watch for quite a while. It's had its ups and downs. TRNX. Miss Vegas? Oh, well, my God. As you guys know, those of you that have been trading for quite a while, uh, this is the former MNGA and Taronis Technologies. I mean, I could just never get the hang of this company. I mean, this company has had its, its uh, fair share of uh, action. And uh, I don't know what the heck went on Friday, but I got to tell you, this stock had pulled back to like 13 cents and had quite the run on Friday. And, you know, I was like, is there any news? What's going on? And honestly, couldn't find anything uh, I out think, there I on think, TRNX. I think Benzinga put a report out saying it was one of the most top 10 oversold stocks. Well, you know what? Um, maybe in the short term, it, it looks like that is definitely oversold. Um, I will say that, you know, they did have some news at the you know, end of July, end of June. You know, they were talking about their water pilot award yep. uh, with a top 10 U.S. retailer. And, um, you know, this is a contract for multiple locations. Uh, you know, they didn't even like mention who this retailer is. Um, and they mentioned that the identity is confidential during this test phase, okay? They didn't say who the retailer is, but they said that this retailer has, by the way, 1,500, over 1,500 locations for potential installation of what they call a water pilot. And uh, this water pilot, what it does, it um, reduces water consumption and um, also gives them re uh, live remote monitoring to monitor any kind of like leak leaks or water water issues um this is really for people that have hotel in the hospitality industry uh restaurants and also uh obviously commercial properties and also apartment complexes and restaurants and things like that so they're very secretive as to who they're doing the test pilot with but uh saying that uh it's very well received who could this company be? I'm going to guess maybe Home Depot or uh, Rona. I mean, I'm thinking, or one of those hotel chains out there. But I'm going to think it's one of those um, Home Depot stores. Oh, that'd be big news I'm gonna, for I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that it's that. So aside from that kind of news of their technology going well and the, and the testing doing well, um, I just don't know what the heck's going on with this company. But hey. You know what? The action was there Friday. Like, I was quite impressed. So, Jim, let's hear it from you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is one that I've had on my watch list quite a bit, but I just kind of took it off, and then she dipped on down to 14.8 I mean, 14, here at a bottom on Friday. And so we're going to – I think the news on this and the new contracts it gets, this thing's just way oversold. And it did have some kind of lawsuit, but I don't pay much attention to them. So we're going to pull up the yearly chart. The yearly chart doesn't tell me much. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. This is where I drew all the trend lines. I erased all of them and put new trend lines on it. And I was calling out resistances and supports Friday on this trade. 
I said no lower than 19 cents and your first support was right around 21 and I was drawing these resistance lines in places of consolidation I see one right here that I left out so I'm going to add it and you can see how I draw these trend lines in a consolidated descending pattern right here you can see it pulling back and then she went ahead and sewed off pretty hard on the 20-day chart so we're going to pull up now the, the daily one minute how I called this trade out I noticed that it was showing disrespect here down below the 9 EMA most of the morning and then all of a sudden it started crossing up over the 200 the 34 also joined the pack and then it started respecting that 9 EMA all the way up to the top I called a resistance of 2496 and what we hit was 2468 once it hit that resistance level I started knowing a little bit of selling so I called out a support in the room I said 21 cents will be your first one 1986 and then I went ahead and set an alert for 19 cents and the next third support was going to be down there around 1888 for the pullback and it could have gone a little bit lower right around the 1870 but instead she hit that 21 and she bounced on up and this is a trade where you want to uh, look at size proportion if you'd have bought 10,000 shares at 21 you could have got out of it with two cents and made a hundred dollars two hundred dollars on this trade real fast like so she did pull back after hours run into that 200 EMA which made it a strong buy off of my support of 21 cents so we're back up here at 2330 I'm bullish on the momentum on this stock and I'm just gonna see if it wants to break my resistance levels let's go ahead and call that 19 as a sell-off support if it hits that 19 I want to see it bounce right back up to 21 consolidate and then break up to that resistance level and I'm going to call that right around the, this new resistance up here at 2350. If we can bust past that 2350, I'll pull up the 20-day chart, and you can see the other resistances on this. Please feel free to stop this video at any time and, and copy and paste these charts for your own personal reference. But please don't use my trades. Just make sure they sum up to your ideas. And that's going to be TRNX. And the next one we're going to talk about is pretty much you would think TRX without the N. TRX. All right. So we're going to talk about TRX. And on the Canadian exchange, it's called TNX. Uh, and on NYSE, it's TRX. It's a Canadian company from Toronto. And uh, you guys that are Canadian, I'm really surprised we don't have enough Canadian subscribers to this channel. You guys should be watching and learning, uh, Canadian traders. Um, so this Tanzanian Gold Corporation, you know, this one here had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart. I mean, this is like a textbook chart. I mean, this is the kind of setups that you definitely want to have and trade. Um, this has a beautiful pocket pivot, had a nice volume surge on the stock. I mean, I like even the price of the stock um, at the dollar twelve, and uh, a beautiful, you know, a lot of strength in this chart i mean if you just look at this chart i mean all you're seeing the whole month of july okay every single day this chart is moving up and you know what this was down to like 80 cents 81 cents and ever since that particular point of entry um it's just been non-stop and i mean this is just amazing i love it and you know they say don't fall in love with it but you know what this is just, you can't not overlook this chart. I mean, it's beautiful. Um, so I want to hear what Jim's going to say about this chart, but this is a beautiful swing trade. I think it's even great for a day trade. Definitely one to watch and add to your list. Yeah, this is a gold play, Canadian gold play, TRX. So I'm going to pull up the yearly chart first. You can see we had a real low on this stock down here at 25 cents with a support level right around the 29, 22 area. She took off pretty well on that trade. We had some real nice breakouts on this, and it ran up to a resistance of 66.86. And I'm going to pull another trend line right here at 60 cents. So we had to have a double top breakout. And that double top breakout was between 89 or 80, yeah, 90 and 92.66 area right in here. That's going to be your low support. Now there's a lot of times where I've got. The three moving averages on here and it respected that nine pretty much on the yearly daily chart and then she kind of had a little disrespect bounced off that trend line almost to the 200 
at 61.94 and then ever since then for the last month she ran all the way up and created a new yearly high of 118. So we're going to pull up a three-year chart just to have just a little look see what we're looking at a three-year. I see a couple resistance levels on the three-year. One's going to be right here at 119.13 and then I'm going to draw this one right here. 119.13 and I see another one which really ain't that much higher at 120.92. So I'm going to leave that out. Next resistance is going to be right here at 132, 132.12. Then another resistance. And you notice I'm drawing these off the bases of the candles. Not the wicks. The bases. That's where all the mustard is. So we're going to pull this back up to a 20-day. To a you can see the 20-day run on it. How beautiful that thing's just bounced on up. That's 20-day, one hour. Then we're going to pull up the daily one minute. So the resistance we got to break is going to be this 118. And that was the day high we had Friday. Pull back support. Let me pull up the 20 day again. So the pull back support on this trade, as I look at it, is going to be just a little under a buck. Right at 98.83. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. If it does, you have an oversold area of 92.66. The resistance first support on this trade is going to be at $1.08. If it holds that, it can bounce up and then it's got to drink, try to break this 117 resistance. If it can break that 117, we'll be going up to the new highs. The new highs on this trade, let me pull up. Is it going to be a guessing? No, it ain't either. Let me pull that three year up again. So the new highs, if we can break past that 117, we're going to take her up to 132 and 137.05. And then it'll probably be stubborn right there. Then you have a three-year high right up here on the wick at 149, 150. That's going to be TRNX, and I wish you the best with it. The next one is a very nice call that Miss Vegas did in her room Friday on her option trading. And she has become a very good options trader on these breakouts, and that's B A. Oh my gosh, guys, girls, you gotta seriously. You have a small account. Options is a great way to try to grow your account um, because you know what? There is risk in anything you do. Stocks, options, for sure. But the nice thing is, you know, the amount that you would put into an option trade is the maximum that you'd be risking. But the amount of gains you can get is unlimited. I mean, what are you going to buy on the stock market for 25 bucks? I mean, you're not going to buy much, okay? You're going to have to get a penny, penny, penny play. And I don't even know how many shares you're going to get. Probably under 1,000 shares for $25, okay? So this is why I love options. So on Boeing, you know it's had a lot of, like, bad news with the 737 Max Air. Then we heard that there's going to be a settlement. But, you know, this stock has had a hard time really, really recovering where it needs to go um, because of all this unfortunate uh, bad press that it's getting. And, and, and of course, it's warranted, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, challenging. But anyways, um, what I wanted to share with you all, and for sure, if you followed us or me on StockTwits or Twitter, you would have known about this trade. I spotted a reversal on Friday, late, uh, early morning, maybe about an hour and 10 minutes into the open, so around 10.45, and Jim can show you uh, the alert. But I did alert in the chat room, and I also alerted on, on social media. And I did alert two calls for a BA, and specifically the one that was of interest to me was the one for 355 strike. And by the way, these also expired the same day, and that's why it's called a lotto play, in my opinion, because you are potentially risking that amount of capital for that day because it's going to decay anyways. Um, but if you can catch them at the right time, there is opportunity to make money. So on BA specifically, I did say the 355 calls expiring the same day, July 5, um, that those were going for 26 cents which is technically $26 investment. So if you have a small account, you would probably have taken just one call. And you know what? This option trade 
went all the way to 235 on the breakout. And you know what? I wish I would have had 10, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't trade 10. Um, it would have been a great, great profit of over $2,000. But let me tell you, you know, if you take $26 uh, and it would have even, you know, when it went to a dollar, that's a great return. I mean, more than 300% gain, 400%. I mean, this went to 800% profit. Um, this is just insane. So Jim can show you also the second screen that I can show you where I did mention at 1245 that the BA calls are now 187 each from the 25, 26 cents alerts that we gave. So there is great opportunity to make money. And you know what? Sometimes it's just about the timing. And um, again, yes, risky when they expire the same day. Uh, but there is some good breakout momentums that happen. And, you know, that was an interesting trade, too. Uh, so that was exciting. And congrats to the BA traders. We had quite a few that uh, were very frustrated with the week in general. But they said that that one call just made their week. So congratulations to them. Um, in terms of BA, I'm going to be watching this actually again. This should be on your watch list every day if you like trading option. Um, just going to be watching it just to see how it's going to behave because it had some more news again that this big company in um, Saudi Arabia, uh, they, um, or sorry, Indonesia, they actually have canceled an order for 30 Boeing 737 MAX aircrafts. And they did put that in the news today. They decided the company called Fly a Deal has decided not to go ahead with the order because of schedule requirements. Now, just so you know, this deal was worth $5.9 billion, but the airline uh, would have obviously given them a bit of a discount on that. But you know what? This company, Fly a Deal, is actually state owned by Saudi Arabian Airlines, which has a fleet of the Airbus A320 planes. So you know what? Um, they've canceled the orders, which is a shame because um, that would have been great. But uh, you know what? I, I just don't think the public actually feels comfortable and, and confident to fly in one of those aircrafts right now um, because I still think that the fix is still not satisfying the regulators. So for now, it's still touch and go with Boeing. So Jim, over to you on Boeing because my gosh, this thing goes up and down and it had a, it went up Friday on the breakout. And let me tell you, it pulled back to around the 355s again. Still yep. on watch. And we'll have to see how this goes. What are your thoughts on Boeing? Well, I've got three different support levels on Boeing right now with a low, low support. At, yeah. With a low, low support at 336. And then I've got another support level right here at 342.653. This is on a yearly chart. And then 347.61. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. As we look at the 20 day, we've got a 353 support right here that we had on Friday and then I'm going to draw another trend line right here at 354.55 is real solid for your first support so let's pull up the 20 day I mean the, the daily one the, let's pull up the five day so we got a low support right here at 353 and we don't want it to go no lower than that 354.55 is going to be your your probably your first support Maybe your second right here at 354.49, 354.55, somewhere in that area. And then the three resistances that can go above is going to be the 355.81, 356.38, and 356.90. It does look oversold on a 10-day on chart as I pull up the 10-day. You can see we had a high of 378.98, actually a bit higher, and but then it pulled back and sold off and then Friday it had that nice little pullback early in the morning and then bounced on up. And I'm going to pull it down here a wick right there at 351.78. So no lower than that is going to be your third, your second support, 353, and your first one right here at 354.55. Be patient with this right in the morning. If it pulls back, it could retrace back up. We'll see how the news reacts to Boeing. And then I've got a long resistance right now. There's two of them. If we can break past that 356.90, one of them is going to be here at 358.41. One 
then another resistance right oh that's beautiful right here to 360.16 and good job Miss Vegas the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ACST you know what no. This company, ACST, believe it or not, is another Canadian company. This company, I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of really good Canadian stocks. And they do trade both on the uh, Toronto Exchange, but also on the NASDAQ or an IZ. And uh, ACST is the ticker for both um, Canadian and uh, NASDAQ markets. And uh, this company is uh, located actually in Laval, Quebec. So Canadian traders, you should be like listening and following to this YouTube. Um, There's a great opportunities for some great trades with even Canadian stocks because I know some Canadians that only like to trade stock on the Canadian market. So this is one you should have on your list. Anyhow, so Acasti Pharma, um, you know, this company, they're into the cardiovascular drugs. Um, they have one called Capre, which is an omega-3 uh, drug. And it basically, it's a treatment for... Um, a obviously chronic condition and uh you know this company was uh back in 2008 so i mean it's not like they've been in business for 20 years or anything like that um so they're looking for a therapeutic drug um that can impact obviously the blood lipids that are associated with the cardiovascular disease um they are currently developing a phase three clinical program uh and obviously um subject to obviously FDA approval. Um, I got to tell you, if they ever get news on some FDA news on what's going on with their, with their, um, with their drug that they're working on, you know what, this could have a very good future. I do want to mention as well that uh, back in the month of June, they did announce what uh, a trilogy number two trial, which they did get a hundred percent patient randomization. And um, it takes about, uh, the trial took place back in December and it took a, a, a long time for the, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time for the data to be accumulated. And by the way, they're going to release the results of this in December of this year or maybe January 2020. The other thing I do want to mention, last but not least, the company also did receive allowance from the Chinese patent office for a new patent that covers both the composition of matter and methods of using the same blood lipids. And this patent is a second one, which will be allowed in China for both, and both patents are gonna be valid until the year 2030. So you know what? Um, this is a company definitely to keep on watch uh, because they do have stuff in the pipeline. And I gotta tell you, anything with cardiovascular to me is big so this is one to watch for sure but the reason i bring it to your attention is because i really love the fact that it had a nice pocket pivot you guys know pocket pivots are one of my, my is my actually i shouldn't say one of my favorites it is my favorite setup the pocket pivot because for me whenever i spot something like that i am looking for the stock to have a nice break and uh definitely like a stress-free trade in my opinion it had a nice volume surge as well the stock's been in a beautiful, beautiful channel. I mean, look at that chart. I mean, just keeps going up, up. Those candles are getting fatter and bigger by the minute. So, Jim, let's hear about it from you because I, I know you like this chart too. Yep. We're looking at, we almost broke out of a, a one-year double top high of 145. We did have mm -hmm. a wick high up there at right around, let me see here, just this right around the 153 level. So that's where we got a break. But these orange lines are back. They go back to 2018. So we broke out past all them 2018 resistances. The blue ones are I've just added for today. So the first pullback support is going to be right here, right around the 134 area, 136. That's where we want to try to keep it. If it goes any lower, it can drop down to this 2018 support level of right around 128. 128. To that 133 area let's pull up the 20 day but let's look at the three year high and see if three years has a higher high which it does so i'm going to draw a couple more resistance levels i'm going to put one right here at 158 then another one right here pretty solid resistance at 169 and then we got a beautiful resistance long 
at the 190 area which runs right into almost the 200 EMA at 201. So we're going to pull back to the 20 day. We've got a couple resistances we got to go. We do have kind of a little pennant flag right here. Kind of pennant flag with a little bit of resistance right at 142. We did close at 142. So we've got to break the high of 149, bring it up to the 1. 49 bring it up to the 152 if we can break that 145 we got 149 152 and I'm going to pull up that yearly chart one more time to get up these other resistances feel free to pause this at any time write down these numbers the long resistance is going to be right around the 180 if we can break that 180 year high that we had back on this little breakout you see it did pull back after that pretty hard but that 180 is going to be a real tough one to break. If we can break that 179, 180 area, we'll go up to 190. But right now we're sitting at 142. So the support levels, one more time, no lower. At a very low support level, right around 115. I don't see that happening. But I can see the 119 maybe on a knife if it decides to pull back. If not, we've got to break that resistance of 145. ACST and let's do the daily just to have a look at the daily one minute yeah the 134 is going to be your second support your first one's at 136 and then you've got this 139 which you can probably just pull back and touch so I'm not going to really count that as a solid support level but the resistance we got to break is going to be that 144 145 ACST the next one we're going to talk about is going to be AETI yeah, so A E T I. I have so many A's today because you know what? I'm an A trader, A plus trader. Um, I'm joking. Um, but you know what? A E T I is American Electric Technology Inc. And this is, you know, another good setup. I mean, they are a provider of solutions of global energy industry. Uh, they have location in China and also in Brazil. And if you actually look at this um, weekly chart, I mean, you can see why you would want to keep it on your watch list. Um, this had, uh, you know, so good support at the 50 day, a little bit of resistance though at that 200 day, but nevertheless, I really like the way that the chart is developing. And, uh, you know, we're right around the 76 cent mark. And uh, Jim, let's hear from you where this has potential to go because I don't think we're done with this chart. I think it's going to have a continuation. Yeah, Miss Vegas just made a good point, kind of subliminal one, but I think that a good trader needs to have a good set of confidence. And if you lack that confidence, you need to build it up some way. So it's not really an ego. It, it's more or less a confidence in what you can do and where you can go with your own, your own composition here. So always keep that confidence a key and have that patience. So AETI, this is a yearly chart. We do have some 2018 trend lines on here. I'm about ready maybe to start to race them and start fresh again. But we are battling a double bottom here at 60 cents. You can see that right here with these two double bottoms. We have a, a neckline or a head and shoulders kind of type right here. Breakout maybe coming right at 75 cents. If we can break past that 75 we can bring her up to new highs to a new little channel right here, which is a resistance level right around 97. So I've got them in the blue lines that are more important to me right now. The low support, not the, the second support, is going to be right here maybe for an idea of an entry right at 70 cents with a low support at 63. And then we have that double bottom down here at 50, 60 cents. So let's pull up the 20 day. Looking at the 20 day, you've got a pullback support here at the 60. And I'm going to see if I can draw me another trend line in here. I'm seeing one maybe right there. So that 67 is going to be your second support. And then your third support is going to be 63 with an oversold area of 60 cents. The resistance we got to break is going to be that 77. Pull back. So here's your support levels again 71, 67. 63 and then 60 cents for a solid buy. We got to break the resistance of 77 cents. I'm going to pull up the three month daily. I'm going to magnify this up a little bit. You see what I'm talking about? You got your 81, then your 85, 
demagnify this and get it back down here to and you had these two big candle breakouts one of them's right here right around the 102 and the 115 that would be nice to see that 115 that'd be a place where I'd probably want to go ahead and scale out some and then try to run it up to that 161 high eventually so this is AETI low support right there low low oversold at 60 third 63 second 67 and 71 with a resistance breakout of 77 cents 75 and then you got the other resistance that follow up and we want to try to get this thing up to about 92 95 cents and that's AETI and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be AMRH well 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 AMRH is just another really nice chart I mean this is a Mary Holdings now you know you got to keep a watch on this I mean this is a company that's into IT technology and uh, you know they have a really cool website they're in the cloud and they're into cloud computing and um, you know everyone's in this cloud okay so I mean they are just you know one of those uh, companies that are obviously in the industry and they're a very fast growing technology they also specialize in SAP and Google Cloud Solutions. This company is located, by the way, in Atlanta, Georgia, and they do have offices also in Phoenix, in Dallas, and guess what? In Toronto, and also in India. So um, this is definitely uh, another one that you should be watching on, um, on uh, this company. Now, I do want to tell you something about why I like this one too on um, AETI. It had some resistance at the 200. AMRH. But, uh, sorry, AMRH. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On AMRH. But um, the reason I like it as well is uh, it had a pocket pivot. So when I see a pocket pivot, because I tell you guys it's my favorite setup, I must look at this trade a little closer. So you know what? This to me... Uh, is very appealing, very attractive setup on the chart. And I do not have a position on the stock at this time. However, I will definitely be watching this a little closer tomorrow because I'm looking to actually take a swing trade on this particular stock because I love the pocket pivot and it's like a footprint that the stock's ready to go higher. So, Jim, let me hear what you think about that. I'm looking at her real well right here. We've got the yearly chart that I do have up, so I need to... Oh, Jimmy. We had a really hard sell-off on this thing. We had a year high of 249 off the wick with the base of the candle right here at 209.63. We had a resistance right here at the 174.72. And then she finally decided to go ahead and sell off hard here. So something happened back in this time right here last year on back in November and then she went ahead and sold off to a 15 cent low and then she started bouncing back up and hit a resistance and started to sell off again that resistance right here at 4818 so I'm gonna pull this up now to the 20 day 20 day one hour we have a support level right here at 3297 and another one right down here at 31 and then the bottom right here at 30. So this stock can pull back but right now it's been in a nice little three week channel between 32.97, 33 cents all the way up to about oh I'd say around this 35, 36 area. And I'm going to put another real resistance line right there at 36.36 that was the high that we had Friday. So there's going to be an equilibrium in this channel, and that's going to be right here at the 34 cent area. So here's your support levels. We've got 30 cents for a very low, 31 for your, your third. Your second support's going to be right around the 33, with your first one right here at 34. We did close at 35.95, which is right around 36 cents, and we did hit, we were at that 36 one time after hours. The resistance we do need to break is going to be this 37.92, bring it up to that 40 area, and I think I mentioned 48, let's pull this up and take a look at it. 
yeah, 48 would be your long resistance on this for right now. And if we can capitalize on that and the momentum starts really getting strong, we can run this into the 200 EMA at 58.979. So let's pull this back to the 20. The two long resistances that we've got to break. And when the real hard one is going to be right here at 48.18, then we've got the 58.79 for, let's say, call that extra credit. That's where you would definitely want to go ahead and take your profit. And we're going to pull this back to the 20 day. Your low support right at 30 cents. The strong buy, 31 for your third, second, 33, and then 34 is going to be your first. This is AMRH. Feel free to stop these at any time and draw these numbers down and use them as your own personal reference. But please go buy your own ideas. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be Oracle, O-R-C-L. Well, you know what? I got to tell you, like Oracle, I had some option calls a month ago, almost a month ago, and I thought it was going to actually break out and it did not. So I will say very disappointed with this stock in terms that the option just did not go my way. I took a loss um, and actually went in quite heavy on that option and uh, made that mistake. Um, because it did not have the breakout that I was anticipating. So, nevertheless, though, I do want to talk about Oracle because guess what? I am seeing some phenomenal activity in the stock. And you know what? This company right now, if you guys know, you know Oracle, you know, just to give you a quick update. I mean, you know, everyone should know about the brand, but some of you may not know, but they're a number one provider of business software. They're very involved in artificial intelligence, blockchain, so if blockchain's going, so is this stock. They're into the internet of things. They're into machine learning. And, um, you know, they are really big, by the way, on artificial intelligence. Um, and that's really what's uh, really getting this company uh, going. And they have um, so many, so many uh, customers. They're in 175 countries. They have 137,000 employees. I mean, that is just crazy. Um, but anyhow, this particular op um, stock in particular with Oracle, I really love it at this time. I'm back and I'm in love with it again. Um, and finally, it's getting to the target that I was forecasting. I was actually had bought previously $60 strike. And you know what? I just obviously, I had the right mindset. But, you know, with everything going on with the markets and the pullback, this just, just did not break where I needed it at the time. However, it is ready now, and uh, Oracle is around the 59.28. It actually had a very nice 52-week closing high and had a, also an outside day. So I am looking for a expansion on the stock. Now, in terms of the options channel, I will be looking particularly at the option calls that expire this week for the 58.50 strike. And I'm also going to be looking at the $60 strike, uh, which is actually more attractive to me because I'm also seeing some open interest, actually over 8,000 contracts at the $60 strike. And they last traded around 27 cents, which as you know, for those of you with a small account, that comes out to $27 for one contract. So, you know, if you're new to options and you have a small account, you may want to consider um, you know what, I'm going to buy an options contract for Oracle with the expiry date of July 19, $60 strike. Now, like I said, it was $0.27, cents, which is $27 on Friday. That was the last trade. That doesn't mean that it's going to be that price tomorrow. It could be higher, could be lower. So I will definitely be trading Oracle and buying the option call. And I'm probably going to buy one for this week, but I'm probably going to buy a lot more for the ones that expire next Friday, the 19th for the $60 strike, because we're really not that far from that target. And Jim, I want to hear what you think about Oracle's chart and where we're going. All right. Well, I kind of pointed out a few of them on there on them option trades too. We also have the ones on the 12th that I was looking at. So let's go to the uh, Oracle yearly chart. This is just a beautiful little breakout here in the past year. You see that we are at a year high of 59.52. It did close at 59.28. Beautiful. We have 
I mean, this is really a nice little last week breakout from that resistance we have. We had like an ascending triangle with a gap up. Resistance we had to break was 57.15. So that's going to be our low, low support. That 57.15 is definitely going to be the low support on this trade. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. I'm taking a little look at this 20-day. So I've got a 56.09, very low. And I've got the third support level at 57.15. Then you've got these three here, the 57.86, 58.40 and then the 58.87. What we do need to break out though is going to be this 59.49 area. That's going to be your resistance to break. Let me pull up three-year chart just to have a look, see if we are at a three-year high also. This is a beautiful chart right now, so let's pull it back to the 20-day. These are going to be your support levels. Your low support right at 57.15, that's where it needs to hold. If it decides to pull back any, I always look at the pullbacks on trades like this and I'm very patient with them. And if it starts to run and breaks that momentum of 59.49, that's where I want, probably would want to jump in this trade. Or even right first thing in the morning if it pulls back and hits that, maybe that uh, 34 EMA at 58.60. So I'm going to be using these moving averages also as supports along with my existing extended trend lines that I have mastered over many many years so the resistance we got to break is going to be the 5949 your first support is going to be right here at 5887 your next one channel of support is going to be between this 5840 and maybe a low of 5786 with a real low support at 5715 for a very strong buy and that's going to be ORCL please be patient with it. Watch it. If it starts to move up, that tape looks good. And that level two is starting to really run. Maybe one you want to jump in on your option play. And the options do look cheap for it, even as a lotto or even as a swing for a week or two. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be something that I love. It's coffee. It's Starbucks. But I don't think I bought a Starbucks coffee in over probably 20 years. So this Oh, my God. So you can't love it. Well, you have to be a Starbucks lover to say ah, only I can say that. So let me talk about Starbucks. You know what? This stock, nobody cares that the price of coffee is like seven, eight dollars for a, a good coffee. This tightwad does. Cares. People are buying it. I mean, this had a new 52 week high. Okay. And uh, by the way, they do have earnings in a couple weeks. And uh, the stock is definitely in a beautiful, strong uptrend. I mean, you know, I, I got to say, I went to this Starbucks uh, last week with a friend of mine, and we went to this, like, um, really cool patio, and we they were giving out samples of this, like, mocha um, iced coffee, and I thought, oh, this is really great, and they said it has no sugar. It was a really great sample, and I'm like, you know, I wouldn't mind buying, you know, do you guys sell the actual mix? And they said, no, no, it's exclusive only to this one store. And um, I was like, oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it was very tasty. And I couldn't believe that they have only exclusive things at certain locations. And this is a very posh location and only to that location. <laughs> so I thought, wow, talk about being picky. Um, but anyhow, Starbucks is on a new uptrend and uh, new highs. And um, I got to tell you, um, they, they, did weren't, they were in the news, by the way. Uh, earlier uh, yesterday, you know, apparently some uh, uh, a shop in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, apparently an employee told six police officers to leave, <laughs> um, to leave the Starbucks. Um, and apparently the barista was very polite. Um, and uh, I guess, I don't know why she told them to leave. Um I think because uh, someone did say that they were uh, had made some boycotts against Starbucks. And so when she saw them come to the store, she asked them to leave. Um, so that's interesting. But apparently Starbucks has apologized uh, for asking six police officers to leave the Arizona shop. Uh, apparently they, they were saying that they made customers feel unsafe. <laughs> that, does, that make, does that even make sense? No. 
Like, how can the police officer make you feel unsafe? Isn't their job to serve and protect? I mean, I don't get that. But anyways, taking that little drama off the table here, um, we are focused on the tape and the price and the chart. And definitely Starbucks is looking very, very nice. And Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on Starbucks, please. Yes, I noticed they come out with some new teas. They got a three trio tea coming out. So that's going to be exciting. I might go oh, buy one nice of them. Oh, that's nice for the tea lovers. Yeah. So let's look at the yearly chart. Uh, Vegas has been pretty solid about this trade from all the way down. I think it was right around the $50 area. And it's done nothing but run up all the way from that $50 area all the way up here to to eighty-seven seventy-nine with a year 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 high that we had on Friday at eighty-seven eighty-nine. So the pullback support is going to be from this ascending triangle right here. You can see the ascending triangle breakout. I'm going to draw that up real fast for you. I'm also into chart patterns. I think that's made me a ten times better trader by identifying chart patterns and ascending triangles off of a good run. So there's your little triangle right here, and we had to break a resistance at exactly 84.72. Once that did, we had a three-day breakout on this last week, and now we're at a double top area for two days in a row at 87.89. So we've got to break that on the triple day on, coming out on Monday morning. Support level is going to be right here. Let me change this back to my dollar signal I got a support let me magnify I'm gonna get this precise start off that wick right there at 8692 gotta have good eyesight I've realized that so we got a low support which was the ascending triangle breakout at 8472 let's bring this up to a 20 day see what a 20 day tells us so 8472 is going to be your support level. It can touch right here at 85, 8507, maybe stop there. But your low support is going to be that neckline of 8472 with your third support at 8543. Your first support or your second is going to be 8603 with your first one right down here, which was the morning low of 8693 with a double top breakout of 8780. Break that, we got to break that 88 bucks to new highs. Now, this can go to new highs. They are a money maker. And like I said, I do love coffee. I grind my own beans. So, you know, I kind of got spoiled in that years ago. And that's going to be your Starbucks challenge for next week. Keep a good eye on this. See if it decides to break that double top at 87.80 to new highs. And we got one more left. And that's called ZS, as a Canadian would say, and I call it ZS. Yeah, so ZS, this is called Z Scaler. Okay, what on earth does this company do? So they do, uh, they're in the technology sector, and um, they provide, obviously, access to applications, obviously, in the cloud. You know, they're kind of like similar to like an Oracle, you know. They also do, um, you know, the Internet of Things. They do cloud to cloud. Um, they have a very state of the art security gateway. Um, you know, they have just they basically do a lot, you know, manage a lot of inbound traffic uh, through the Internet and the cloud. They route all the traffic. Um, they also make sure obviously it's obviously through the Internet. They make sure that the uh, threats are, that are hiding in the encrypted traffic has an SSL inspection. I mean, it's just amazing. Like there's also, you know, the benefits for companies, like by the way, GE is one of their clients, okay? And um, they had to find a really, a better way to connect the GE users around the world um, rather than using the corporate network with a direct to internet architecture. And um, they actually moved to the cloud and the company had to, they, you know, they had, they were being attacked in the cybersecurity space every day. So uh, what they did was they obviously, um, they had, they created identical, identical security. So they were able to, con you know, identify, are you at the office, the home, on the road? Um, they didn't have to use any wasted bandwidth or routing to any VPNs. And do you know that this company saved them as much as $30 million? 
dollars. This is just amazing that what this company can do. I'm sure there's other companies that do that, but you know, the point is that when they're being saved that kind of money, uh, GE's very happy. So, you know, ZS, the scaler, um, I like it because it's definitely looking to me that it's ready for a breakout and it's had also a 52 week closing high. Uh, that candle is looking so juicy and, um, you know, this company is one to keep on watch. Uh, you know, this company used to be known, I don't know if those of you that have been trading for a while, um, they were called at one time Safe, Safe Channel Inc. And they changed their name to Z Scaler in August of 2008. And they are located, by the way, in San Jose, California. So, Jim, let's hear about ZS or ZS uh, because the company is, you know, to me, growth is growth and this company is growing. Okay, news alert, news alert. Charles Babcock, Information Week, says that public cloud spending is expected to top $216 billion by 2020. I was alerted about cloud about 10 years ago. I said this was going to be an upcoming thing, and it sure has been. It's kind of like, you know, when they mentioned Bitcoin on them penny stocks, how they run. So cloud's a big deal. We're going to pull up the yearly chart. First, we're going to be looking at the yearly chart. So here we are. We had a yearly high a Friday of 83.42 with an ascending triangle pattern breakout of the neckline being right around the 79 84 area so I'm going to put that little trend line in here and I'm going to add another one right here at 83 80 83 with maybe another support right here at around 82 13 area so those are going to be my did I not get that on there I'm going to put that back in here 83 80 83 so let's take good look this is the year of breakout we had a low of 3072 and we've almost tripled that here we're at 8342 high on a yearly chart so we're going to pull up the 20 day and remember i'm going to look at this yearly one more time this can pull back and hit this 34 ema which was my last yesterday's lesson we're going to have a little place down below where you can hit that link and you can go right to the lesson and kind of take a little look at that on our youtube channel so we're going to add a low support here at the 34 EMA at 75.45. Remember, this moves around on different time frames. This is a yearly daily right here if you want to follow that. Then we have another support level right here at 77.64. So let's pull up the 20 day now. We'll get right to it. Low support down here right around the 74 area. I'm adding on to it. You notice the moving average did change. We are respecting that 9 EMA right now, and Friday it did pull back to that 34 on the 20 day 1 hour, which would have been a very strong buy if you'd have been watching the tape and also the level 2. And I always put that news on there when I'm looking at a chart just to see if there's any updates coming on or any news, news flashes when I'm watching the stock. So let's call this out. We're going to call low support. Right down here, right around 79, it's going to be your third one, 79.74. Your second support is going to be this 80.83 area. Your first one's right here at 82.13. With a resistance breakout, we're setting up like a little triangle about midway through the day. we got to break that 83.16. We did have a high of 83.42, so that's going to be the resistance we got to touch. And if it wants to bounce past that, we're going up to new highs on the yearly chart. And that's ZS, the Canadians would say, and this American will say ZS. And I'm so proud of Miss Vegas. She lives in uh, Canada, and she's been really trying to promote the Canadian traders. And that's one of our key targets right now. Plus, we're, we're trying to hit the world. So, Miss Vegas, also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm going to pull up the website right now. We have links on the website that could take you to our Twitter page. You can sign up, follow us there. Miss Vegas posts alerts throughout the day. It's better to get us live on voice in our chat room. So if you're following us and you want to get into the chat room, we do have a link for it. It's right here under chat service, and you'll see the setup instructions, the pricing, testimonies, 
and this is how you follow the instructions and you can get on our server server and have a free trial and I think we have a one week free trial to the room and you can decide if you like it or not but it's always nice to listen to the people in the room we we do have options room we also have a uh, regular day traders room scalping I scalp a lot I like to take my profit I also swing trade and I'm starting to learn options myself not off to a good start but I know it'll get better and so I'm gonna hand this right over to Miss Vegas and the links to that are here we also have a stock twits link Miss Vegas stock twits if you want to follow us there and I also have mine on here also and you can follow us there and always ring that bell on the YouTube channel Miss Vegas okay so you know just to wrap things up um, definitely come by visit the website um, you know we have the new feature there with the stock portal it does show you the ticker it shows you the chart um, it shows you the block trades because I really like to follow the money because you know what money is what moves the stock I mean obviously news will move stock too depending what the news is but you know what money bottom line is what moves the stock volume and the money going into the trade um, so that's really um, how I like to look at things and um, you know I just want to mention too that you know it's really important to you know when you're looking to learn about trading like everyone sometimes thinks that oh you know I want to just I, I just want to make money I just want to make money that's fine everybody wants to make money nobody wants to lose money but that is part of trading but you know what it's very important to watch the videos learn and invest in yourself and you know what you don't have to always invest like all this money to like learn um, you know our, our chat room is reasonably priced you can come and learn so many things but even if you can't ca afford to go into a chat room which is fine you know what so many videos on YouTube out there that are free you can read books you can subscribe to blogs and newsletters that are free but at the same time you know um, it's important for you to you know invest in yourself like I'm just really amazed like I just want to say one thing like sometimes people will go for dinner and they'll go spend like a hundred dollars on dinner or eighty dollars on dinner and I mean that's just you know and I'm talking like at our you know decent like restaurant but then they won't spend anything on themselves for the month to help educate themselves and help them become more financially free so you know sometimes I just question that I'm thinking that makes no sense to me um, but anyhow bottom line is there's a lot of free things out there uh, Jim and I are going to be doing more educational content videos. We did our first one yesterday. Jim did a great job. He talked about all the different EMAs that he likes to trade with. Um, and we're kind of keeping the videos nice and short so that this way it keeps your attention span. And then if you like that video, please comment. And if you have suggestions for videos that you want us to talk about and help you with, please comment as well so we can put them on our production list. We have so many things that we're going to be doing. So follow, subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day, and see you tomorrow, Monday. This Anything is, else to add, Jim? Yeah, this is Sunday's edition, uh, July the 7th, 2019. They're always a little longer, but they're always very attaining to the next coming week. And then we also will be doing short little videos throughout the week, maybe three or four of them after hours, just kind of give you updates. So this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, and we wish you all the best for next week. And we both love, I love, and we love stocks.